Today on Enamel Pearls, we'll go over bone quality and quantity and how it affects implant treatment. When we are preparing to place an implant, we need to know the dimensions of the bone, the density of the bone, and how mature is the bone we are drilling into. The easiest way to know the dimensions of the bone is to take a dental CT scan. Seeing the bone volume in 3D takes the guesswork out of implant surgery. Here I am in CareStream Dental's cone beam interpretation software, looking at the bone in cross-section at the side of the future implant. I go through a checklist in my mind as I read the bone. First, what's the buccal lingual dimension at the bone crest, the mid-alveolus, and the apical region? Two, how close is critical anatomy like the metal foramen, inferior alveolar nerve, or sinus floor? And three, how far do I have from tooth to tooth for my implant? The CT scan can answer objectively the bone dimensions, but also helps us estimate the quality of the bone by showing us the bone cross-section. Bone quality refers to how hard or dense the bone is. Ideally, we would like a nice cortical shell of bone that will hold our implant rigidly fixated while osseointegration takes place. From the cross-section of bone on a CT scan, we can see the basic density of bone. Some clues to the bone quality are the thickness of the cortical plate, the opacity of the marrow space, the size of the marrow spaces, and the region of the mouth in general. Carl Misch's implantology text related bone density to different types of wood. D1 bone is like oak wood, very dense, not very vascular. <laughs> this bone type can be found in the anterior mandible, especially when the alveolar bone is resorbed and you're drilling into basal bone. D2 bone is like the density of pine wood. This is our ideal bone density because we have a nice cortical plate with dense but vascular trabecular bone. Drilling into D2 bone is smooth. Implants have a nice fixation in D2 bone. D2 bone is also found in the anterior maxilla and mandible as well as premolar areas. D3 bone has the density of balsa wood. Have you ever carved a piece of balsa wood for Boy Scouts? Well, it's very soft and is very common in the posterior maxilla or in grafted bone. D3 bone is trabecular bone with a thin or non-existent cortical plate. Implant placement in D3 bone can be tricky because in soft bone, the normal size osteotomy may be too large to engage the implant body. Various techniques are used to condense the bone instead of using drilling to create the implant osteotomy. D4 bone is like styrofoam. There's mostly marrow space and loose trabecular bone. This softest of bone is found in the posterior maxilla, especially under long-standing pontics, where the bone hasn't been stimulated for a long time. In D4 bone, the implant preparation is underprepared to condense the bone at placement. Implants in D4 bone are often left to heal covered, since they're not rigidly fixated at the time of placement. Now that we have discussed how to interpret bone quality and quantity, we're ready to place our implant. For more from the Enamel Pearls, visit our YouTube channel at www.enamelpearls.com.